some things I'm ashamed of, and I don't really want to have to tell it. And so far, he hasn't, you know, forced me to or, or really asked me to. There are times I do share my failures in hopes to help someone not make the same mistake. But only not to make the same, same mistake, but also tell of the victories, you know. Um, it takes a wise man to learn from his own mistakes. It takes a wiser man to learn from the mistakes of others. You know, I mean, most of, most of our parents tried to get us not to make their same mistakes. And they really was trying to tell us certain things so we didn't make their mistake. And sometimes we did it, sometimes we didn't. Amen. Um, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, you don't have to go there, Paul says, um, what's the separation from the love of Christ? And he gives this list, you know, so, you know, death, life, height, this, you know, principality. I mean, he gives this whole list. He said, nothing should separate you from the love of Christ. And love doesn't necessarily mean acceptance either. Okay? Because if love meant acceptance, then there would have been no need for Christ to come. Amen. Because he always loved, but he did never accept sin. He had to come and, and pay the price for sin that you may be reconciled. So sometimes I tell people that, you know, I've had people especially with the LGBT movement or stuff like that. Well, you don't love? What? No, no, I love. I mean, my, no, I, I love the soul because that's what God loves. You know, I, I love the soul because that's what God loves. Uh, well, you, well, but it's still sin. Oh, are you judging? No, it's, it's sin according to the Word of God, period. Not. That doesn't mean I don't love you, but that doesn't mean I accept that particular lifestyle as a lifestyle that's pleasing to God. You know, he didn't accept it. I don't have to accept it. So love doesn't necessarily mean acceptance either. And, and, and that's what the world would try to get us to almost back down upon. Amen? All right. Let's, let's, we're going we're gonna to talk about a whole little thing here, a few things. Let's go to First Peter chapter 4. In order to go higher in God, we can't remain at the same level of thinking. Amen. If you want to go higher in God, you have to think differently. You have to begin to act differently. Um, if you remain at the same level, but yet want to go higher, then you're, you're really not going higher. You know, God's not going to... Um, we can want to go higher... But when you go higher, other things are going to come. Other things are going to begin to happen. It's just the same thing in school. You, you can't say, well, you know what, I want, to, I want to graduate high school, but I just want to stay in elementary. <laughs> you know, it don't work that way. You know, if you really want to graduate high school, you're going to have high school tests. You know, I mean, it'd be, it'd be crazy for you to have a final as a senior and ask you, what's two plus two? What's two plus one? You know, some flashcard stuff. What's three times three? No, are you graduating from high school, especially now, are you doing algebra? Some maybe doing calculus? <laughs> we, we didn't start doing algebra until we got to high school. Well, I didn't start doing algebra until I got to high school. That was, I think, a freshman. Um, now I think they're doing algebra in junior high. On a baby level, they're doing it in elementary. I mean, getting story problems. I used to hate story problems. You know, if you just want me to figure out the miles per hour, just can't you just tell me to figure out why you got to give me Johnny went five miles and he traveled six. And if he didn't go six, he would have won. You just tell me the numbers you want me to write down. That, 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 that was my mindset. But uh, how many know that they was trying to get me to think differently? They trying to get me to think on a higher level. You know, if I really wanted to be on that high level, I had to think differently. So, you know, we, we have to do the same thing, and God is asking us to do the same thing when it comes to love. And that's love on a higher level. Uh, four, chapter four, you have it? Amen. Let us start at verse eight. Let us all read. And above, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. 
For charity shall cover. Oh my goodness! Oh, I just mean charity means what? Love. Love. And it'll do what? Cover what? A multitude of sins. Of mistakes. Sins. sins. Not just faults. Not just, you know, you late all the time. No. Nah. It's covering sin. So love does what? Love covers. Amen? I mean, these are strong things. I just love God that he just, he just put all this stuff in his word. All I got to do is just read the word. Amen. Uh, verse 9, use what? Hospitality. Mm -hmm. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards. Uh -huh. We got to be good stewards of God's grace. Uh huh. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, uh -huh. let him do it as of the ability of God. Uh -huh. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay, I, I want to read it in the Amplified Version. I, I, I like the Amplified Version um, because in the Amplified Version, they actually kind of give some of the meanings of some of the words and kind of inserts it just like in brackets, okay? So verse 8, it says, Above all, have fervent and unfailing love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sin. It overlooks unkindness and unselfishly seeks the best for others. Now that's strong. Be hospitable one to another without complaint. Okay. Be hospitable one to another without complaint. Ooh. I mean, don't, don't be hospitable and then complain about it. Amen. Just as each of you has received a special gift or a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God, it says employ it in serving one another. Is it appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace, faithfully using the diverse, varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor? Okay. Whoever speaks, verse 11, to the congregation is to do as one who speaks to oracles or utterances the very words of God. Of God. Whoever serves the congregation is to do so as one who serves by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified or honored or magnified through Jesus Christ, to whom all the glory and dominion forever and ever. So just kind of going back to what uh, Sister Cherise was saying even last week, you know, being able to love past that myrrh. Um, when, when, you, when you see the dirt or when you know the bad. He said love covers a multitude of sin. sin. And, and, and so if you're really loving as God has called us to love, you know, love, love begins to cover. And, and, and again, cover don't mean necessarily acceptance, but it certainly doesn't mean let me just pull the covers off you. Um, I mean, uh, who was it? Um, Noah. When Noah got drunk, one of his sons came in and he was exposed. He came back and told his two brothers. And then the brothers, they, they grabbed a sheet or a cover or whatever, and they went in backwards and they did what? They said they covered up his nakedness. You know, because there's, there's a time where you, you just begin to cover up instead of exposing. You know, sometimes... Um, and you know, sometimes in the, in the wrong thinking, we want to expose rather than cover. Well, that's not the true love of God. He said the love of God begins to cover, and it begins to cover sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think I think for some reason we have a hard time um, as people of God truly covering or forgiving. Amen. Amen. Dude, don't, dude, don't get too quiet on brother. Y'all getting quiet now. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I mean, you might not run around the church tonight, but I guarantee you, if you just really listen and ask God to help you, it, it'll help you. Amen. I mean, it really will. It, it, it'll help you. It'll help us. I got my own little saying, we, we the most forgiving, unforgiving people I know. Now that's my little saying. Because 
We say we forgive, but we don't. I can understand the world not forgiving. I can't. I mean, they don't care. I can understand people in the world not really forgiving one another, holding grudges, or whatever. But I don't understand is how you have somebody who's been regenerated, who's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, who has been justified as though he had he or she has never ever sinned. I mean, everything I've all I've ever done wrong, far as sin, God has taken that thing and just wiped it totally clean. I don't understand how I can know that and know how God has truly cleansed me and forgiven me. How in the world I can't forgive somebody? Right. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't sound right as a child of God, you know. And so either that either that means that person don't really understand um, the. Um, Eternal ramifications for not forgiving somebody, okay, or um, they don't understand how that they refuse to do it. It's not pleasing in God's sight, and they just set on being stubborn and holding offense or bitterness in their heart. Because when you really understand what God has done for you, then then you it ought to be just a little easier, at least a little easier if not a lot easier, to forgive somebody else. Amen? Amen. 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 And, and we're still talking about love because you can't, you can't separate the love from forgiveness. They go hand in hand. That's why I say I, I need you to love one another as I have loved you. Because he, had to be, he also had to forgive them for many different things, but yet still love them. All right? And, and willing to impart and help them. Chapter 5, verse 21. Do you have it? Amen. Matthew 5 and 21. Let us all read. You have heard that it was said of them by old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be danger and help. Boy, that's one we real all age. Boy, they used, to, they used to drill this home with us, boy, come through Sunday school. Like that. Well, like you just didn't say fool in church. I mean, if you said fool, you was already hell by him. If you used the word for you, I mean, you, you could you know, almost want to read it in scripture when it's right there because you were scared you going to hell. But what it's really saying is when you begin to have an offense um, against, he said, therefore, I'm sorry, let, let's go on. Let's read number 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, uh -huh. and thou rememberest that thy brother hath all against thee, mm -hmm. leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to uh -huh. thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. I mean, I, I mean, that was, for me, it's kind of plain, but this is what he's saying. I mean, they, they was coming, they was bringing their gift, they was bringing their sacrifice, they were bringing their, their worship unto God. Okay. He's saying, if you, you come in to bring your gift, to offer it unto the Lord, and I remember, you know, Keith had a little problem with me or something, or he had an ought. He's saying, just kind of set that to the side. Let me come over here and talk to Keith. Let's get this thing right. Then, if we get it right, then you can sit there and you can just hold on to me, man. If you want to get it. <laughs> then come back and offer your gift. Otherwise, he's basically saying, your, your gift offering ain't doing me nothing. But God, God said, it's so important to me that you are working and loving one another. It's that important that if you're not loving me, if you're not loving one another and reconcile with one another, when I know you have an all, I, I can't accept your gift. Yes, ma'am. And you have to be so careful because God knows our heart. And you don't just go and say, well, let me go. You still have to go to that person in love, even when you're going to apologize. Absolutely. And not try to justify why you did, what you did. Well, I wouldn't have did if you hadn't did. Just say you're sorry from your heart. 
Never that's that's absolutely. You don't have to. There should be has to be no explanation. Never rule an apology. You don't have to rule an apology with an excuse. Exactly. Oh, right, right. That's true. That's true. That's just like you. Is your hand up or you just stretch? Okay. I mean, that's like I had. I said it before. I had a lady come up to me. I said she come up. I didn't even know I offended her. And I offended her in the choir. I didn't know. I mean, I've said many things. So, depending on how you feel that day, I'm sure I might have offended you. But I, I got a job to do. But I didn't know she even had a problem with me. And she came up to me and she said, oh, Excuse me, brother, you know, I just want to say, if, you know, if I've done anything to offend you, I'm sorry. I was like, I don't know. You ain't done nothing to offend me. I'm, oh, we good. I mean, I don't know. Well, has it ever occurred to you that you may have offended somebody else? <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, I did. I got a chuckle because I just, I just do that because I got that little nervous chuckle. And I was like, no, it didn't occur. I was like, son, like what's up? She said, well, I was, uh, yeah, because you, you, you offended me. I was like, oh, I, I don't even know what I did. I said, can you tell me what I did? Well, no, I don't, I mean, I don't want to really repeat it or anything. I was like, okay, well, that's, okay. I said, I'm probably bound to repeat it. If you can't tell me what I did, but I want to tell you, I am really, really sorry. Because I didn't even know I did. Now, one, I'm, I'm kind of taken back a little bit. I was like, okay, that just, this is her way of coming or whatever, but hey, man. You know, so I could, I could sit and I can be immature, and I can say whatever, or, but I'm trying to be the mature one as well to say, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't even realize, and whatever I did or said, please forgive me. Because, I'm, because one, it's, it's not that deep in, in the sense of for me to sit back and feel some kind of way. So but it's better to just make that thing right, make it clean, make it clear, and let's move on. From that time on, oh, we were, we were, oh, we were buddies. Now, I never did anything no different, but I also, I can appreciate her heart and her spirit, though, of, I'm going to say, working on her, because I was good. I mean, she, she made it a point. Anytime she seen me, I almost come, praise the Lord, brother, give me a hug. I was like, praise him. And I'm just, I'm just hugging you, loving you, smiling, everything. Because I was always good. But I could at least appreciate her, at least going, oh, she would almost seem like she went out of her way. And maybe she had to do that to help her. To help her, you know what, let me, because I want to be right with God and I want this thing right. You know, let me make sure I put this effort in. Um, you can hold Matthew 5, but also grab Ephesians real quick. So just, just mark Matthew 5, grab Ephesians Chapter 4. That's right, girl. You better tell it. You better tell it. Preach it. Uh, verse 25. Ephesians 4, starting at verse 25. Have it? Amen. 25. Amen. Let us all read. Wherefore, putting away lying. Speak every man truth. Uh huh. For we are members of one another. Uh huh. Be ye angry. Uh huh. Sin not. Let not the sun go down upon Okay, ain't nothing wrong with getting angry. There is nothing wrong with being angry. Angry is an emotion. There's nothing wrong with being angry. But. What'd you say, but? But. But, say not. So, being angry, it happens. But don't sin. Okay? So one way not to sin is don't let the sun go down on your wrath by doing what? Number 27. Neither give place to the devil. Or don't give any space. Don't give any room for the devil to move. Because once you are angry, and if you give space to the devil to move, that anger now becomes bitterness, and that's when the sin happens. It was okay to be angry, but when you did, when you gave room to Satan, now bitterness is set in, and there's a root of bitterness that now is going to be there until you deal with it. That, that's when the sin begins to come in. Let him that steals steal no more, 
but let him rather labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Verse 29. Let no corrupt, what? But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may what? Okay, these are pretty plain instructions. These are just good living tools right here. He's just teaching us how we should conduct ourselves. Okay, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day. Uh-huh, 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, Anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. And be ye what? Tender hearted, forgiving. Here it goes again, back to that commandment, even as Christ, for God's sake, has forgiven you. Forgiven you. All right. I just, I just want to read that real quick in the Amplified as well. It says, uh, uh, which, where we started. Verse 25, Therefore rejecting all falsehood, whether lying, defrauding, telling half-truths, spreading rumors, and any such, speak the truth each with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one another. We're all parts of the body of Christ. Be angry at sin, immorality, injustice, or ungodly behavior, yet do not sin. Do not, like, do not let your anger, what cause you shame, Last until the sun goes down. Do not grieve. I'm sorry. Do not give the devil opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge, nurturing anger, harboring resentment, or cultivating bitterness. Now it is. It is using strong words and in, in, in amplify. Again, when you begin to look up these words on some of that, again they just kind of use those same meaning of the words and put it in there. And this is good. Verse 29 says, Do not let unwholesome, uh, says foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as good for building up one another or building up others according to the need and the occasion so that we are being a blessing to those who hear. So again, God, God is calling us to, one, put away some of these things. I got angry. Okay. Am I holding on to that anger? Or am I releasing that anger? And then how do I release the anger? Do I just release it um, hypothetically? Or did I just really deal with it? Because sometimes we're not dealing with it and we're allowing that anger to continue on from day to day and then now that anger has now become bitterness and that bitterness is sin. Because that bitterness has a root in you that you look at your brother or your sister in the wrong manner. And if so, you ain't pleasing to God because you, you bring in your gift and he can't hear you. Amen. I mean, that's, 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 that's the word of God. Amen. Okay, well, let's go back to, let's go back to uh, Matthew chapter 5. Let's jump down to verse 43. Uh, 43, 5 and 43, you have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And pray for them which use you. Mm -hmm. That he may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Uh huh. For he the Son to rise on the evil. Uh huh. Send the rain on the just. Hey, man, I know I feel you, Dre. I feel you, boy. Boy, he, he gave out a sister Kelly Jesus on that one, boy. He said, Jesus. He said, Jesus. Yeah, because you know what? It's just Because when you read it, you think, oh. He said, this is how it was of old time. That's why I can't nobody tell me uh, the law was easier uh, or grace is easier. No, grace, he upped the ante. Gr grace, grace is not necessarily easier than the law. The law, as long as, you know, and you hit me, I hit you back. You know, as long as I didn't actually uh, lay down with the woman, I was good. He said, I, you've heard it said, oh, if you 
commit adultery, this happened. He said, I'm saying, if you look on her to lust after her, you committed that thing already in your heart. He said, if you look at another person, if it's all of a female, if you look at the man to lust, you committed adultery in your heart. So there's a whole lot of us that committed adultery. Amen. I have, amen. amen. I'm just being honest, I have. Because I've, I've, I've lusted in my heart. I've, I've looked on a woman to lust. And I've had to repent. And I've even repented unto my wife. Well, I'm just, you know, I, 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 I am sharing that. Why? Because I'm just, I'm just being honest. But sometimes we don't think about it like that. He said, man, okay, bless, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, bless them. Do good, do good to them that hate you. You hate me and you telling me to do good to you? That don't even work, that don't even sound right. Why should I do good to you when you hate me? And it don't even sound like he's suggesting stuff. Like, I'm, I'm just going to make some suggestions here and I think it'd be nice if y'all could try to get the, he, he just says, I say unto you, Love your enemies. He don't say, you know, let's just try to really work this love thing up. No, he says, this is what I want you to do. He he also says, bless them that what? Kurt, he don't say, you know, if you can, well, I know you're going, you're going to get to a place one day, and I just want you to enter, do, try to do, no, he just do good to them that hate you. I think in Proverbs, he talks about, when you do good to those that despise you or hate you, in doing so, you heaping coals of fire upon their head. God's kingdom is different than our kingdom. God's ways are different than our ways because what we think shouldn't work, works. I mean, what we think shouldn't work, works. Because we, we think by even, I mean, we can take it from the giving, we didn't get to the giving portion yet, we get to the heart to give. But we think if I give, then I'm, I'm losing. He says if you give, you're going to gain. Huh? There's an old story about a, um, you know, a well and a pump. And then there's like a glass of water. And, and when you come to the pump, they say either you can drink this glass or you can take the glass and pour it on the pump. And that help primes it, and you can get more water, plus leave another glass for the next person. In your mind, you think, I'm thirsty, but I pour that out, how am I going to get more? Because they understand the, how the pump works. It's set up to design, if you give this back to the pump, the pump is going to give you more, plus set it up for the next person. And God works the same way. He said, you think... If, if the person hates you, don't do nothing for them. He's saying, do good to them, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you for doing good to the very one that hates you. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's just in the Word. And then it says, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. You talking about me and you persecute me? Guess what? I'm just going to pray for you. Oh, I, ain't, I ain't blessing you. And that don't mean, oh Lord, I want you just to smite them and get them, Lord, out of leprosy. No, no. I'm going to pray for them. Amen. That's just, I'm just reading the word, y'all. Yeah. All right. Uh, where did I stop at? Where did I stop? Verse 46. For if you love them, this is a strong question. For if you love them, which what? Love what, what reward have you? What kind of reward is that? Do not even the publicans do the same? If you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans? But then he says, be perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Okay, so he said, no, you can, be, you can do this thing. Now let's go to Luke chapter 11. one scripture there and go and then go back to Matthew 23. Uh, Luke chapter 11 verse 42. You have it? Amen. 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 But woe unto you Pharisees for ye tithe, mint, and rue 
and all men of earth and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done and not leave the other undone. Now let's go to Matthew 23. It's the same account, just, uh, just a little bit more. 23 and 23. Matthew 23 and 23. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye, uh huh, and coming, and have what? Omitted or forgotten the weightier matters of the law judgment, mercy, faith. These ought ye have to done and not leave what? The others undone. So he, he says, okay, you, you tithing, you giving. But you leaving the weightier matters alone. He said, basically, in layman's terms, you majoring in the minors and minoring in the majors. The things that you really ought to really be focusing on, you're not doing. Basically, you're doing everything that looks good, but these other things, you leaving alone. He said, you ought to do both. He said, you should, one, love, have faith, have mercy, right judgment. Those things are the way of your matters. But he said, but then don't leave the others undone. Now keep on giving. Keep on bringing the tithes. Keep on giving. But don't forget the way of your matters. Oftentimes, we're focusing on the wrong thing when it comes to people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. <laughs> Um, he kind of even goes down. I, I, just want, I just want to say this kind of like a side note. Let's just go down a little further. Let's read at verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make the outside of the cup and a platter, for, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be what? Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye what? Sepulchers. And indeed appear beautiful outward. But are within full of dead men's bones. Uh huh. Uh huh. One more. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within, ye are full of Jesus, Lord, don't we want to be like the Pharisees? He's saying, you got, you got this outside thing together, but this inside thing needs some work. He never tells them not to keep the outside clean. But he says, but don't have the outside clean and the inside with iniquity and hypocrisy. He said, first clean the inside so that it can match the outside. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, 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 got, I got a question for you because, uh, because I want to also because uh, we can sometimes have this go too far. Okay. Well, we'll get to it. Let me, let me back up. First, how do we really clean the inside? Through the Word. By the washing of the water of the Word. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind. You have to renew your mind. Because your old mind is messed up. Because your old mind is used to thinking how it thinks. Doing how it used to do. He's saying, but in order for you to really be transformed, you got to renew your mind. Because we can get saved and still have our old mindset. And that's just a fact. We can also be mature in one area and lack here in this area. I mean, I, and, 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 it's, and sometimes it's a, it's a mistake as saints of God. And I, I've been guilty of this when it comes to leaders. That if a leader was good in one thing, I, I, I thought they just was good in everything. And that's not true. Because you can be a good in one area, but horrible in this one. I mean, you can be a good uh, pastor and teacher, but be a horrible father. Or, or you can be a great father, but a horrible husband. A great husband and father, but a horrible businessman. 
And, and so just because you're good in one area don't mean you're good in all. You can be mature in one area and lack in maturity in another area. And, and so you can't take for granted that just because I got this together don't mean I need to don't need to grow up in this area. Because you have you have to be able to know yourself. I need to grow up in this area. Like I'm good here, but I need to work on this side. And that goes with them looking in the mirror. Uh, I always say, I mean, we can find so many flaws, flaws and flaws in other people, flaws and faults in other people. Mm -hmm. When it comes to ourselves, it's hard to pick something in the mirror and be like, you know what's wrong? And we look like, well, I'm okay. I feel like I'm alright. But it's hard, really, if you think about it, it's hard to really pick something and be like, what can I work on that help me? You know? Yeah. So that, that goes with that uh, looking in the mirror and trying to strengthen whatever you have in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll get thanks, Morgan. You better turn that light on back there. <laughs> uh, just to piggyback off what Keith said, uh, I think when you, we don't want to spend time with ourselves. Okay. You know, through prayer and just taking that time and just really meditate because we scare ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because that's when we really kind of see who we are at times. So we cover it up and and we say, well, I'm all right, you know, but I can see what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. But I haven't taken that time to wash myself in the word. You know, what I mean, I'm just that that outside looking clean. But in that, like you said, on the inside, you dirty because you haven't taken that time for yourself. That's, that's true. And so I, I, I want to pick up on my second question. And I kind of wrote this down as I'm reading. Because and, cause I'm thinking about us as human nature. And I, I've been guilty of it. There are times where uh, if someone doesn't talk about their failures, we think, they think, they better than everybody else. Why is it? You don't ever hear me talk about my failures. You think that I think I'm better than you. Because you don't hear about my failure. You share yours, but I don't ever share mine. Or you share mine, but you don't share yours. I'm talking about I'm sharing, I don't share mine, or I'm not sharing yours. I'm saying I, I, I just don't. I just choose not to talk about the failures. I just choose to talk about the victories. And so I'm saying that can be appeared as though and if I tell your failures but won't tell my own, then I'm God's going to run in my mouth. And, and then that goes back to the earlier scripture where it talks about let all evil speaking and all maliciousness, all manner. That goes back to that scripture there. Because I can't tell you about your I can't tell your fear of failures, but don't ever say nothing about mine. But I'm just saying, if I if I choose not to tell my failure, that doesn't mean I think I'm better than you. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes um, it could appear like how a person is coming across, like their like their their body language. You know, like because your body language is one of the strongest languages ever. So it could come across like you know that they do they they better. There could be a cockiness. It could be behind. it could be like a pride there or yeah, cockiness. It could if, it, could, it could show if it's a true if it, you know what I, I believe if it's a true cockiness and arrogance, I, I believe it will show. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Yeah. But I personally have been guilty towards somebody nobody here. I'll just clear that up right now. <laughs> I have personally been guilty towards somebody because I didn't know them. I never heard their failures. Neither could I really say they was being cocky or arrogant. But I felt like they felt like they was better than everybody else. Well, when in reality, I just didn't know them. And never really had a chance to hear them. Now, I'm just telling you what I've done. Now, I mean, and I falsely accused them as almost seeming cocky and arrogant, but really at the heart of it, they wasn't. They was just really confident. Where I can truly see. now, I've also I have seen that other side where somebody being cocky, but even more, but some of the cocky ones they they usually slipped up though, and even told some of their mistakes. But but I, I personally have seen someone felt like they was oh like they just they just so such a much or whatever, <laughs> and uh. <laughs> you know what? It wasn't like that at all. 
I'm, I'm falsely thought that. I'm just, I'm just kind of, I just kind of want to just throw a little slant on that dealing with dealing with the inside being not clean but the outside clean because sometimes the inside and the outside both can be clean and just because one doesn't choose to magnify their failures but magnify their victories don't mean that they're thinking they're better than somebody. It might be they might be doing all they can to talk themselves and encourage themselves on a daily basis. That particular person might have very low self-esteem and it takes all that they can to be able to muster up, to keep speaking life, to keep speaking positive things in their life just to combat the negativity in their own mind. Uh -huh. And since they continue to speak of their victory, we think, huh, I used to be like this. I'm not like this anymore, but I used to be. Where... Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I would say transparent, I'm pretty candid. Um, I'm also learning what things to be and what things not to be. Um, but I've been like this most of my life. And I've kind of felt like, man, I share something deep. You're supposed to share something deep. <laughs> but that ain't fair. You know, you didn't tell me to share the deep thought. I just shared it. I felt like I just gave you something intimate. You're supposed to give me something intimate. I mean, like, I don't get you something, like, juicy, like, something me and my wife done, or whatever, and then you, all you did was say, you, you tell me, it's like, man, I spent $20 I shouldn't have spent. <laughs> like, how did I just compare to me and my wife and we did? <laughs> I'm just being honest. Well, that might be too honest. I'm, and, and I used to almost, almost kind of be like, that with my close, close friends, I, I say it, like, hey, hey. Well, I mean, I, I don't share some stuff with you, and you, you ain't said a word. And they said, I ain't tell you to tell me that. You chose to tell me that. And it's like, ditto. It's a relationship. I, I just understand. I just understand the relationship. Where they just got that type of person to share their personal stuff. And I had to be mature enough to be able to respect them. I'm, I ain't telling you something I'm, hypothetically. I'm telling you something I've lived. I'm, I'm going to live this thing. Where, I mean, that's just kind of who I was. And I had to learn how to respect them. And still love them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, not, I'm not saying you. Uh -huh. I'm just using your, your scenario. But sometimes we have to, if that happens sometimes, the person has to evaluate themselves like, why can't you be trusted with the information? Are you one that go, did they hear you talking about somebody else before? So they feel like, I don't want to share it with you because I know that you're going to go tell X, Y, and Z, and everybody's going to know. So sometimes you have to be, are we trustworthy people that the people can come and share things with? Or are they going to hear it? I mean, it, it can be a whole myriad of things. At the end of the day, though, sometimes they're not even feeling a certain way and we've allowed our own thought process kind of going back to they they just who they are but now I don't put them I don't label them in the same time. I just give another example like it could be that's it could not be right, right right no 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 absolutely it could be also that oh, it, it could and then that means yeah, I'm definitely not going to share because you can't hold water right Absolutely, yes, ma'am. So then, say I'm a sharer, uh -huh. and they are not a sharer, uh -huh. and then I share, and they just don't share because that's not the kind of person they are, right. then I stop sharing. I bet you they're going to feel the type of what? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, 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 I Right. And then that's you know, when you say, well, because you don't ever share. Right. And honestly, I just kind of felt like, in a sense, me giving up all my secrets, right. and you don't ever share because I don't, I just, uh, I just don't particularly like that. Right. And so then they can say, oh, well, that's cool. They not done. You know, well, that's <laughs> immaturity. Want, want that's that, well, again, that's immaturity. The reality is, we try to be perfect as he's perfect or mature. 
we as the people on either end have to learn how to be mature. Because still at the end of the day, I have to love you as he loved. I mean, because because he, he he didn't have that was a requirement. He didn't he didn't give me a suggestion that that was a requirement. Man, I really want. Can I can I go to the next section? Can we take a little bit? Hold on, let me look at the. No, you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. We, we, we can say, well, let's, 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 let's go to Luke chapter seventeen. Let's go to Luke chapter seventeen. Uh, let's go to Luke chapter seventeen because I, I wanna I almost hit this. It's just just powerful. It's just good. Just help me, Jesus. <laughs> this is one of the ones. It's like, woo, Jesus, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Uh, verse 1. We have it? Luke chapter 17. Amen. Well, you know, the word of God is just good. Amen. Even when sometimes it's hard to eat. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard, hard to eat. And, and you, but you, but you gotta, I gotta be right. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, I gotta be right. Sometimes you gotta sit the side. Right, right. But verse 1 Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible. Okay, okay, let's try, let's try to, let's just, let's just read the first few words again. It is impossible, but that offenses, they, but offenses, what? That, it's going to happen. You're going to get offended. Okay. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that he uh, take a millstone and were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. <laughs> if thy brother against thee, rebuke him. Or re that rebuke means bring this bring thing out the open, confront. Because that rebuke, sometimes I think we, we read some of these 16 saying that rebuke, like, ah! That don't mean that. It means confront. Okay? Confront him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, and if he say, I repent, thou shalt what? Woo, Jesus. And the apostles said unto him, Lord, our faith. Basically, they said, you, you just, you just, whoa, that was a tough one. They didn't say, Lord, can you break this thing down? They said, increase our faith. Okay? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it this. And then the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say, Not unto this mountain, but unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by, by the root, and it shall obey. Uh -huh. So we used to think about that mustard seed in mountains. But it's like he changed it up a little bit. Okay, go ahead before I go on. What's it about to say? Oh, so, okay. So, Pastor Ash, yes. this happened to me like plenty of times. Okay. And I, not just here. I'm just saying, like, even okay. in the past, uh -huh. people will come to you, and you can feel in your heart when somebody is really sincere uh -huh. and really apologizing, okay. and not just because it's communion. You don't. Want to <laughs> right, right, right. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> right, right. You know, but it's so. So it was saying that okay, it's. If they come to you, uh -huh. then forgive them. But what if you know that you're not coming to me in love? You're not really coming to me in love. You're coming to me for your own vain glory, for your for the, your benefit, and not because you really want me to apologize to me. Okay, I got, so, I got, I got, I got on this particular one. Yeah, yes, but I also got, I got something for you though. So but maybe in regards for that. Forgive him. Right. But you really to me. Right. So basically we're saying we don't have to forgive somebody you don't ask for. Is that what we're saying? No, I'm saying like the way you coming to me is not sincere. Okay. And I shouldn't have to I then, shouldn't have then, to accept it. Then I don't have to forgive you? Should I have to accept it? I know it's not real. Do you, do you, okay, well I'm, I'm asking I can a question. Feel it. <laughs> okay. You're not being sincere. Do I still forgive you? I wasn't sincere. Okay, do I still forgive you? You can if you want to. Okay. <laughs> is God requiring us to yeah. forgive a person? God is requiring you to forgive. Whether they were sincere or not? Yeah. Okay. That's what okay. God okay. So then, then, go, then you, we answer the question already. So 
I mean, Jesus, wrong, Jesus, he, he never even gave him a chance. I mean, in, in, in his toughest time, in, in, in his beating, all that, he gets hung on the cross, bleeding, dying. He says, Father, yeah, yeah. Then Pastor, Pastor. Stephen, Stephen says, Lord, don't lay this to their charge. To their charge. Which is so strong because he had a forgiveness that came so strong, he gets a vision from heaven that Christ stands up. Which is a whole other thing that I really love because Christ's work was already done and he was seated at the right hand of the Father. Pastor, I understand all that. Okay, I, I so Pastor, if you don't come sincerely, I don't have an op I don't have the option to forgive or not forgive you. I understand. Okay, but well, listen to this, Pastor. Okay, listen, listen. Okay. So then, the way that I use listen, Linda, listen, 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 Switch and then I'll absolutely. That's why the apostle said, Lord, help me. Basically, they said, increase, increase our faith. Our faith, basically, help me. Jesus, he did. Basically, we are. I mean, I, it's, it's getting good. It's so getting what good. Is that they're not sincere. It, it, I, I can really feel, I can, I do, I can feel. Sister Deborah, no, go ahead. Are you done? Okay, Pastor, I can feel for to me, for uh, Sister Sharif, Minister Sharif, when she was saying, I know that they're not. It, it really doesn't, being in that position, if you know, then change your, your confession, and you pray for them, for, Lord, open up their understanding. They're not real. Because if they go in that way, it's messed up. That's a way to sin that will so easily beset them. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that. So you pray that off of them, that demon, that spirit off of them, that whatever you feel, because you have the spirit of discernment, you pray it off of them so that they will. Because remember, our blood battle is not against one another. Right? Well, and, and, and going back to the earlier scripture, love your enemies at that time. They've been your enemy. Bless them. Pray for them. Persecute you. Persecute you. So and in doing so, you are heaping coals of fire upon their head. See, that wasn't reserved for the heathen. That was just reserved for people. I, I, but I'm not going in prayer saying, oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to get these coals. I'm going to get these coals on their head. I'm going to get these coals. I'm going to get these coals. Coals. Come on, my goodness. You heard it too much. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Even heard it. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. <laughs> he didn't come out right. You heard me, Sister Boy. Thank you, Sister Boy. Thank you. It got caught up. He left out there. He left out there. Listen, listen. 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 What did he say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he say? Like, <laughs> but again, he said, well, he, he goes back, he says, it is impossible that offenses not to come. Offenses are going to come. Gonna come. We're, we're trying to go through this life in every aspect or in different aspects and think we should have offense. And he said it's impossible. That's what the scripture says. It is impossible, but that offenses, not they might, they might show up. It said they're gonna come. You can have an offense in your home, you can have an offense on your job, you can have an offense at the church, you can have an offense at the store. He said offenses is gonna come. Where do somewhere in our mind we think I should never be offended at home? Who told you that? I should never be offended at my job. Who told you that? I should never be offended at church. Who, who told you that? 
Mm -hmm. The word says Where offenses will come. Home? You get them at the house oh. of the Lord. Lord well, well, I'm saying you get them out of get them out of the house of friends or something like that. I'm just saying, I mean, really, I mean, who, who told you that offenses won't come? Because the word is very plain that offenses will come. But we'll say things like, I, I should never get offended here, or I should never be offended in this area. I should where where we get that? He said, Woe unto them. But notice he also said, but also woe unto them from whom the offense come. John the Baptist got offended. Oh, yeah, I was about to say that too. <laughs> what did you say, John the Baptist? <laughs> John the Baptist, and he said, and, and you tell John, blessed are they that are not offended in me. Now John done seen all these things happen. John done got the revelation, said, behold the Lamb of God. But then John got beside himself a little bit and he get thrown in jail, ready to get his head taken off, thinking like, what is up? Like, I'm supposed to be the greatest prophet? And all this, I did all this, and what's up? Are you really the one? He said, man, tell them blind, see, deaf, hear, lame, walk. And blessed are those not offended. Because he knew. Amen. Ooh, Jesus, help us, Lord. The more you have, the more offenses are going to come. Much is given, much is required. You can't, wanna, you can't go on a higher level on God and expect not to have better or more offenses. It's not possible. Not even a little bit. If you, you can't say, I want to go higher in God, I want greater from God, and expect no offenses. Matter of fact, you're going to have more offenses and greater than attack so you can be on a higher level. We, we, we expect to have little elementary offenses, but yet when I have a master degree level in God, it's not possible. He said, if you can't handle this little offense, you certainly can't handle all this. You can never reach this level. You can't handle this little bit. This is true. It made me think of an example I'll get you. It made me think of an example of American Idol. When American Idol first came out, oh, everybody was against Simon. Because Simon said like, he was just rough. You know, some people like their rough. Like, you know, Simon, just tell me the truth. And almost like the other ones wasn't. But that's because they were just all nice and sweet and sugary. And Simon was just like, oh, you horrible. Or you terrible. Or you never going to make it. The folks are like, man, like he's cold. No, Simon understood. If you can't handle me as one person or as one or two, three judges, there is absolutely no way you'll be able to handle this industry once your record hits the market and you can't handle your city talking about you. You can't even handle the nation, much world, the worldwide. If you can't handle me telling you, you sound horrible. You will not be able to handle all the tabloids coming at you. It's like he, he already knew you want to go on a higher level, then you have to be able to accept my criticism or you'll never go on a higher level. It is impossible to be on a higher level and not expect offense to come. Neither does that give us an excuse or it says, no, 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 hey, all right, all right, Woo, you hear that? No, but woe unto that one on whom the offense comes. I call I caused the offense. Woe unto me. Yes, ma'am. I just think, um, I know I, I used to really think like, well it shouldn't. Like I come to church to actually feel free mm -hmm. and to to actually lay my burdens down, not gain more burdens from disgruntled people in the church. Mm -hmm. So like sometimes we feel like we shouldn't get offended in the church because mm -hmm. like this is where I come. To get free. And that's, that, that's a lie. I learned, I, learned, I learned over the years. It's a false expectation in my own mind. Over the years, it, I learned. Absolutely. absolutely. And, 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 and at the end of the day, sometimes it's just not just not knowing. Yeah, and then, you know, and not only that, but if you're a fighter, if you used to be a fighter, I did not if you you fighter, you could do, you dealt with it in the world differently. So if somebody did something to you, I could just handle that. Mm -hmm. But over in the church, it's like it was more hurtful mm -hmm. because I couldn't release it the way that this flesh used to release it. Yes. So now I had to learn. I had to learn to release Ooh. it in so many different ways. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, that would made it more hurtful, also. Uh, uh, absolutely, because if you used to cussing somebody out. And now God is saying, I'm not pleased with you cussing me out or cussing somebody out. Now you're feeling like, oh, oh, I can't release. What am I supposed to do? 
Then I could really learn how to build. Can I really pray? Can I really pray? And ask God to not only just help me, but help. Can I really? Yeah, you can. You know, I, I, I see your hands. I just want to. So again, going back to, he says, so if you have faith as a side of a size of a mustard seed, he might say unto this what? Sycamore. It's like okay, like okay. Why didn't you just get the mountain? Let's remove this thing or whatever. No, a tree is different than a mountain. A mountain don't have roots, but a tree has roots. Why does he tie the two together? Because he know that if you don't release that thing and you don't get that thing right, that thing will become a root of bitterness within you. And you have to use the faith of God, the faith that you have on the inside. He said, you don't, you still don't need a lot, but if you just take that little bit that you have, that you can begin to get that root, get that whole tree lifted up and say, get on over here because I don't want that offense. I don't want that bitterness. I don't want that. Get that out of my life so I can be right and I can keep on moving on. Mm -hmm. he, he, tell, he said, rebuke him. We don't want to confront. So, what you're saying is, you know, instead of fighting, I still have to confront. Come here. You know, just kind of keep hitting my shoulder there. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, don't, I, I don't really like him hitting me. You know, I'm going to forgive him. You know, I mean, I, guess, I mean, I feel like I guess, you know, he's going to keep on hitting me. I guess he just feel like I'm weak. And I, I'm just going to keep on taking it. And he's going to keep on hitting me as long as I just let him hit me. And I'm going to keep on forgiving. Ooh, Lord, forgive him, Jesus. Forgive him, Lord. He's even going to the jaw now. You know what I mean? He's gonna, but until I say, hey, don't, don't, don't do that. I don't like that. That offends me. That bothers me. Until I confront him, he'll keep hitting. Many times we're not getting that release or we're not getting it right because we won't confront. We just keep allowing the hitting and we don't confront it. Many times the, the, the bitterness sets in because of the things that we don't say. Amen. Yes, ma'am. What our reaction is supposed to confront? Are we supposed to love? That is love. That is love. Yeah, I gotta let you know that you hurt me. I gotta let. I have to let you know. If I don't let you know, you will keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. So, some homes, families, people on the job. So many of our lives sometimes are chaotic and have things messed up, and we got things of bitterness because we won't confront. And then when we do, we don't confront in love. We confront in anger, and we confront in bitterness. Instead of just confronting and saying, yeah, I just want to let you know that, that offended me. Or that bothered, that bothers me. Or I don't like when you do that. Or I don't like when you don't do it. But we don't ever confront it. And so if we don't ever confront it, they're, they're bound to keep repeating it. Right. It's not fair to the person. It, it, in one sense, it wasn't fair to me that she told me that I offended her and she never even told me what I did to offend her. I'm bound to repeat it. But if she chooses not to tell me, that's, I did all I can do. Please let me know so I don't say it again. But if she don't tell me, that's on her. I must, I hope I don't do it again, but more than likely I probably will if she doesn't tell me. But if you never confront, if I just keep allowing them to hit me and hit me, I'm loving, I'm loving, but it, the scripture didn't say just love him and not confront him. The scripture says confront or rebuke him. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever heard the statement that offended people, offend people, hurt people, hurt people? So it's like, mm -hmm. he was probably pressing you because you done probably took a few jabs that you didn't realize you took. Maybe so. So now he's constantly pressing you. Maybe so. N now you confront the situation, but you know, you done took a few jabs. But, but maybe so, because but I'm also the mature one, and I'm going to follow the scripture, and I'm going to confront him. And he should have been more mature and confront me if I offended him. But you now you're a little wiser, though. You're a little. No, wiser I mean, and, and so and so now that I'm confronting him to let him know I don't like that. If he has a problem with me, he needs to say, "Well, I didn't like what you did to me," and I'm like, "I didn't know I did anything." You see what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's about growing up. It's about maturing. You know, if if if, if I tell him and he still doesn't tell me. But he don't know I was only getting him because he hurt me. And he still never say nothing? Guess what? I'm more likely. Then it just goes reverse. He was hitting me, I confront him, but guess what? I'm hitting him and I don't even know it. 
Because he's sitting back, not willing to confront me. And he's just holding it in and holding it in and holding it in. And he's hoping one day. And guess what? We, we, we are praying. We praying. We, we are praying. But the Lord didn't say, pray that thing to stop. He said, confront them to stop. See, we, we, we want to, there's another scripture that talks about if your brother is offended, and if you want to go reconcile with your brother, you go to him or her. Actually, say, you go to him and you say, you know, you try to get that thing right. If they do not receive you, it says, take another person with you and go to them. If they don't receive you, then it says, then bring them before the church. If they do not hear the church, then therefore let them be just like the heathen. Basically, let them be cast out. When you say bring them to the church or in front of the church? <laughs> they, brought it, they brought it to the church. They brought it in front they of, brought it the open. of the church. They brought it openly. They brought it openly. But that's yes. after you went to them and they didn't receive you. Right, that's after they didn't receive you. They not only didn't receive you, they didn't receive the witnesses. The witness. All that. Right. That's why I so, said, and then it said, what if you bound on earth or bound in heaven? What if you loose on earth? Because what if you prohibit or whatever you let go? Then I'll bind it or let it go in heaven. That's where that come into play. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I'll be in the midst. And you can ask what he will. It had to, on that particular one, it had to do with judgment and coming in to make things right. Oftentimes, we won't make things right. Again, we're talking about loving and maturing and growing in God. I personally don't want to remain at this level. I want to be on a higher level in God. That's my desire. And so since it's my desire to be on a higher level in God, guess what? Offenses, they come. They keep on coming. And I have a responsibility. As it come, I deal with it, I forgive, and I move on. If I don't, I'm holding that thing in. It becomes a root of bitterness. And then that bitterness is sin because that iniquity begins to happen. And I can't even look at you the same. If you can't look at somebody the same, you got a root of bitterness and yes. you ought to get it right. Amen. You are in danger of hell's fire. And the, that's, I mean, it's a period now. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty plain. You, you are in danger. See, sometimes we just don't understand sometimes the ramification. He didn't give us an option. He said, you have to do this. If you don't, you will lie. He said, and then this goes. Why? He said, because if you don't forgive your brother, their trespasses, he said, I won't forgive you yours. And so if he's saying, if I don't if you don't forgive your brother their trespass, I, I, I don't I don't know what to do with the scripture. I mean, I don't know if there's another way to theologically move it out or think of a different way. It was pretty clear. He said, if you don't forgive, I ain't gonna forgive. Which means your sin and your trespasses are still on you because you won't release. Your brother. Yes, sir. Now we're gonna dismiss. It's not the it's not the offense because like you said, the offense is gonna come. It's, it's gonna how come. you respond. It's how you respond. It's how you respond. And you have to use the faith that God that you have in God to help remove that thing. You you can do it. We have the faith to be able to do it. But guess what? You have to choose to want to. Otherwise, you can choose to hold on to it, and your life will never be completely right. Because you will hold on to that thing. Amen. Amen. Don't worry, Lord God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your goodness, thank your you. mercy. We just thank you, Lord, for your wow, everlasting love, agape love. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. Help us to love, Lord, like you love. Help us to truly love one another as you have loved us, to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love God with our whole heart, being, and soul. Lord, cleanse us, Lord, cleanse our heart, Lord God. If there's anything, Lord, any root of bitterness, Lord, and me and anybody, Lord God, that we get that thing right. For it is pleasing in your sight that we be right in your sight, Lord God, and to our brothers reconcile, Lord. And we appreciate you, Lord God. We just thank you for what you're doing. And just let our words and meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, thy strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Any announcement?